Today we're talking about the free and reduced meals application approval process. This is something that in the state of Iowa, every school that uh, every JMC customer school will have to go through um, this process to get approved by the state of Iowa in order to use an online application for free and reduced meals. My name is Eric Pageant, I'm the Head of Client Services. I'm joined today by Head of Tech Support, Eric Doyle, as well as Amy Sprock from Central Lion and Jennifer Woodson of West Central Valley. Thank you everybody for joining me today, appreciate it. Why are we here today? The Iowa Department of Education has released the steps needed to obtain approval for online free and reduced lunch applications. There are seven scenarios to complete. Each scenario consists of creating contacts, creating students, entering specific income amounts, printing a summary page, submitting the application, accepting the application, and printing a notification letter. So those are the, there are seven different scenarios as far as um, income of adults and, and different um, income scenarios. And we're gonna go through those each today. But we're gonna have a little bit of a different, uh, different feel. So uh, I'm gonna go through the scenarios really quickly and then we'll back up and go through each one of them. But here are some helpful tips to get you started. Each one of these scenarios has, has you enter adults and children into your JMC system. We recommend going through and creating all the adults first. So when I share this presentation with, and video with you guys on YouTube later today, you're gonna notice in the uh, description of the YouTube video, you're gonna see two documents. This presentation that you're seeing on your screen, but then you're also going to have a PDF of just the scenarios and some helpful tips from JMC. So those helpful tips are, we recommend that you create all adults for the scenarios first. You're gonna enter just one adult in JMC for each scenario and list them as a primary contact for your students. We recommend that you use the same generic password for all the adults that you put in. So when you have to log into the family side of things, uh, it's much easier for you to remember. But then we also recommend that you find a kindergarten group that you're not currently using and you create all your students there. Now the reason being is because it'll be easy to find and you will be able to hopefully use these same people year after year to do this process. Um, we're hoping that it doesn't change a whole lot and we can uh, get that done. So. Um, I know that the process this year can seem kind of tedious with, with seven scenarios, but if anybody remembers the process last year, you'll notice that this one is uh, tons easier. Um, and the two ladies with, with me online today have already gone through this. Um, Amy and Jennifer, what, how long did it take you guys to get, to get approved once you had finished this? Um, for me, I sent it in, I believe, it only took about three days after I sent it in to Deb to get approval. Great, great. And the Deb you're talking about, we'll, we'll mention her several times as Deb Linderblood, I believe her name is, um, from the state of Iowa. And you'll find her email address at the end of this presentation. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll run through the scenarios, then we'll back up and put them in. Um, scenario one has, uh, two adults, one child, everything is left blank, no income. And notice that we have to print the summary page, that's on the parent side. Then we have to submit the application, that's also on the parent side. On the office side, then we have to accept the application and print the notification letter. So two things you're gonna print for each scenario and email into Deb. Now Deb has said, and I'll reiterate this later, that she would like the summary and the application to be bundled for scenario one, and then scenario two, summary application, summary th scenario three, summary application, and so on. But then she would like that to be scanned and emailed in as one attachment on an email, as opposed to seven attachments or 14 attachments. So um, 
let's go ahead and and actually I'll show you what I've already done scenario one so let's jump over um, to my JMC site and you'll see again the first uh, the first thing we recommend doing is going to edit no I'm sorry attendance contacts edit contacts we'll click on add and we will add the to the uh, Andy Anderson um, and if I find them here you can see what I did Andy and Amy Anderson were the first adults um, in scenario one and all I had to do was list first name last name and password and like I said earlier we recommend a generic password for all these adults so it makes it a whole lot easier for you guys to to submit this so now over here I am logged in as our, I will log in as Anderson one two three four five and go through this with you in this scenario there is they, they say leave all income and case number fields blank so for this scenario we just have to go through and fill out only the required um, required fields this is the student that we attached don't have to check anything here or here Alex Anderson is the child that was listed in the scenario I add, I need to add a new adult because in the scenario Aunt Amy Anderson was listed hit save and next nothing to check here according to the scenario on all of these you can click on no social security number you don't have to type anything in none of these are required you don't have to fill anything out here on any of the um, scenarios don't have to do that there's nothing to do here now this is the summary page so I, I want everybody to know right right away here this is the page you have to print out the first time I filled this out um, it was very easy to just get into the habit of clicking next 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 whatever and submit um, make sure you check this this box that you're certifying that everything is correct on this page and then print this page so in your browser you would just go file print and you could print straight to a PDF if you wanted to um, or print it out and scan it to a PDF if you have a scanner at your school so this is page number one that you need for scenario number one now I can go ahead and hit submit and if I head back to JMC office click on the home page I have a pending free reuse meals application select this one that's the one I just filled out accept it and now view and save the notification letter if you want to take a look at what it looks like um, this is what you should get so again, this is document number two that you would have to send to Deb for scenario number one. And that one, the print notification letter automatically creates a PDF for you. So when you click on that button, it creates a PDF and puts it in your downloads folder. Right. Eric, you're still a little quiet. I heard you, but just a little quiet still, okay? Great. Um, that was scenario number one. Scenario number two, we have adults that we have to enter. Again, we will enter Bob Brown. And during the application, we will enter Betty Brown. And then we have some income scenarios that we have to put in. Eric, do you have these up on your screen as well so you can watch me go through them? 
Yes. Okay. Oops. Great. So we'll head back to um, my JMC screen and head back to. We're going to start just at the home screen because we're going through this one um, uh, from scratch here. So I'm going to go to attendance, contacts, edit contacts. And for this scenario, I need to add Bob Brown. And all you have to do is enter the name and the password. Hit save. Now, I'm, again, we recommend that you just go through these scenarios, add all your adults. But since I'm going scenario by scenario, um, you will have, uh, I'm going to go the adults and then, and then kids. So now I'm going to go under um, edit, new student wizard. Now earlier I said um, in the helpful tips that we recommend finding a grade, usually a kindergarten group that doesn't have any students and put all of your students for these scenarios in. I have done that. My kindergarten group is HK. So I'm gonna put all my kids in there for these scenarios. In this case, we are adding one child, last name Brown, first name Ben. Genders do not matter here, so you can pick whatever you want to. And hit, oh, one more thing. I'm gonna take out everything except active. So we're not gonna state report, include an attendance, rank, honor roll, nothing, just active. Hit save. Eric, yeah, Eric go ahead. I don't think we're seeing your screen. Uh-oh. We're still, still seeing the presentation. Well. Okay, let me try. How about that? There we go. Now we can see it. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right, so I have put the student in. Now I need to uh, hit save. And, and again, I, uh, I left only active checked. They do have to be active, but everything else is, um, is unchecked. I hit save and that, that's fine. It's because I haven't, I'm in year 2021. That's also very important for everybody to keep in mind, make sure you're in 2021. So now I'll go back into view student data. I'm right back at that student. And I'm gonna change the primary contact to Bob Brown. Hit okay, hit save. And again, I, I just to reiterate, I created Bob Brown as a contact. I created Ben Brown as a student and now I've connected the two of them. So now if I had and I want to add one more key to that is you yep. notice that Ben Brown, the only box that's checked is active. Yep. Okay, are you seeing my parent app now? Yes, Eric? we yeah. are. Great. I'm a little gun shy about that now. So um, here's Brown, one, two, three, four, five. And now I'll start with the meals application. Click next. And next, the adult was Bob Brown. Next. And this is the student that was attached, Ben Brown. Now, the only thing with this scenario is Bob receives a pension of $260 per month, and Betty makes $600 per week, and Ben makes $100 per month. So nothing here. Nothing here. This is foster care at different programs, Runaway Homeless Youth Act. We don't need to add a new child, just one child in this scenario. It, this child does have income in this case of $100 per month, so we need to put this in, correct, Eric? 
That's correct. Great. Um, it doesn't give any information on how Ben earns his hundred dollars a month. So I'm going to guess we can just do this and type in $100 monthly. Great. We need to add a new adult. In this case, it is Betty Brown. Hit save. And next. Okay, Bob receives a pension of $260 per month. There's pension, $260 monthly. And next, this is for Betty. Betty makes $600 per week in her job. Next, we don't need social security number again. None of these are required. That's not required. We have some legal statements here. We just have to read. I read them very quickly. I'm certifying, and now again, this is the screen that we have to print out. Okay, do not have to complete the waiver. That's the summary screen. Now I submit and head back to JMC office. Pending free reduced meals application. There's Bob Brown, select, accept the application. And view notification letter and save file. Eric, anything you want to interject here? Nope, looks good. All right. Ladies, am I missing anything? Nope, I think you did everything. Okay. All right. Now you should be back at my presentation, correct? Yep. All right, scenario number three, homeless student. We have Candy Chase as an adult, Cody Cooper as an adult, and Caleb Chase as a child. So I'm going to enter Candy Case this time, Candy Chase, excuse me, as an adult, and then uh, Caleb Chase as a child. Identify Caleb as being homeless, and we'll go from there. No other income information has been provided. So once again, attendance, contacts, edit contacts. I'm going to create a new one. And scenario number three, the adult is Candy Chase, password 12345. Hit save. Now I'll go back to edit new student wizard. It's a new to district student. Last name, the student is Kayla, oops, Caleb Chase, gender, grade zero, HK. Again, whatever kindergarten group you want to use, and then uncheck everything except active. Hit save. Go back to view student data. Change contact for Caleb Chase and find Candy Chase. Hit okay. Now I have saved one more time. All right. Now I need to log out and log back in as Chase and go to the meals application. Next. Read all that, and next. 
Andy Chase. Next, Caleb is the student. Hit next. This, this information was not um, required in the scenario. Hit next. Now, Eric, this is where I would mark the um, homeless student. That's is correct. That student? Mark the student is homeless. That's correct. Yep, right here. We don't know, none of this was, or is this, none of this was um, was mentioned, correct? In scenario three? That's correct. I don't think they gave you any of that info, so you can just yeah. click next. Caleb Chase is the only student involved. No income was noted in the scenario. I'm going to add a new adult. First name is Cody. Last name Cooper, hit save, hit next, and no income was provided in this scenario, so we can go right on. Same thing with Cody. Again, you can choose no social security number. None of these are required. That's not required. Read the legal statements. And here is your uh, summary page. Certify. Make sure you print this and submit. Back to JMC office. Go to the home page. We have a new meal application. Select Candy Chase. Accept the application. View the notification letter. Okay, that's scenario three. Eric, before we continue on, there was a Q&A that came in. Did you take a look at that? Yeah, it's asking about other languages, and at this time, no, the only language we have this in is English. Okay. Okay, scenario four. Foster children. We have Dennis Dakota. Diane Dakota is a foster child. David da David Davis is a foster child. And we have some uh, income to enter as well. So we will jump back over and take a look at that. All right, back to our JMC home screen. And we'll go to, uh, excuse me, attendance. Contacts, edit contacts, and we will add a new contact. The adult in this household is Dennis Dakota. Password 12345, and save. Edit new student wizard. New student. And in this case, I have, I lost my place, Diane Dakota. I always do that. That group, hit save, whoops. Okay. Back to view student data and tie that contact I also need to uncheck this stuff. Tie that contact back to Dennis. Click OK. Eric, in your opinion, it, it, this scenario has um, another foster child. Should I enter that foster child here or on the application when it says add new student? Probably in the add new students, because it, it could be that this this child maybe is not a primary or whatever. So I would think you'd add them on the new students. Might not even um, be a We met the ladies too, what they did on that. 
Yeah. If I just remember. added it. I just added it as a student afterwards, not in JMC. Gotcha. Shouldn't matter. You do only um, providing information on that application. So great. Okay, so I have this all saved. Head over to the meals application, log out, log back in. This time I am logging in as Dakota. One, two, three, four, five. Those application. Okay. Was Dennis Dakota next? There's the student Diane Dakota. Nothing here, but this was a foster child. So we need to go here. And we didn't receive any information about this, so we can go on. We will add a new child. First name was David, last name Davis. Click save. Hit next. And we did have some child income on this scenario, so we'll hit next. Diane had nothing. And David made $100 per month. It doesn't say how, so we can choose this. Monthly. There were no other adults in this scenario, just Dennis Dakota. Dennis makes $1,200 every two weeks. No social security number, no contact info, nothing here. Certify, print this page. This is your summary page. And it's also a good check, because I can have in here, um, we have Diane, we have David, uh, $100 a month. Dennis, $1,200 every two weeks. Hit submit. Head back over to the office. Pending free reduced meals application. Select, accept, and view notification letter, and save. Randy brought up a good point earlier, Eric. If, if people want to know who signed the waiver, we have a quick link on this page. Under We're under lunch, free reduced, meals application status. We have a waiver report right here um, that you can... Uh, Click on and see who has um, who has completed the waiver. So we have a waiver report right there. Eric, do you want to take a second on these questions? Um, you have plans for the meal applications to be available in other languages. If so, do you have a time frame? No, no plans at this point. Okay. That I know of. And then, can you repeat? If you already explained this, how do I enable the meals application so I can begin entering these scenarios? That would be under um, online settings, correct? No, it's all under the online uh, registration stuff now. Oh, is it? yes, yes, yes. Yeah, we moved that. So under online settings, online parent, online registration, setup, gotta log into each building. Yep, go to the district. District settings. And right here, allow parents contacts to access meal on, online meals application. Okay. Okay. 
the next one about step-by-step -step instructions in a PDF, uh, no. They should just be able to walk through it and they, they should know which things apply to them because we have no idea which things apply to them. There is, I believe, a video out on our video site for parents for that. Um, but again, we don't know what their answers to their question, you know, which things they qualify for. Um, as they walk through, they should they should know those questions. And if it's something that does not apply to them, they just move on. But it's it's simple enough that they should understand on each page which page they qualify for because we have no idea um, which ones they do or don't. Um, this was all developed specifically from the Fed site, so this is exactly the way the Feds want it, with the the verbiage on the page that, page that they want, et cetera. So it's all exactly the way they want it, um, has been looked at by the state of Iowa and approved by them. So it's all exactly the way the state of Iowa and the Feds want it. Yeah, and any PDF of step-by-step -step instructions that we would put together would be read the page, click next, fill out the page, click next. It, it would. Uh, like you said, every answer is going to be different. So it'd be hard to make an instructional page other than what we've already done on within the application itself. Yeah. So Eric, uh, I'm gonna go, uh, we've gone through the first four. Scenario five, I'll, I'll jump back to the uh, presentation here, but um, unless you disagree here, I, scenario five we'll just look at here. Um, it's also has to do with foster and non-foster children application. Um, we've kind of showed where to put that in, but I'd like to skip down and do one more with um, scenario number six or seven, which are very similar, um, but they have case numbers. So if you agree, I think we'll skip down and do scenario number six and, and call it good. Is that okay with you? Yep, I think that's good because everybody gets the gets the concept that they're just right. going to follow the the scenario for each one and do it individually to get the stuff ready for them. Right. Okay, so we're going to skip to six um, to st scenario six, and this one is, is pretty straightforward. We have one adult, one child. We have a case number to put in, um, and then we will submit and accept the application. All right, so. Let's head back over to JMC. Okay. First thing we'll do is go to, I always do that, attendance, contacts, edit contacts. We're gonna add a new contact. This contact for scenario six is Faith Fletcher, password one, two, three, four, five. Now I'll go back to edit new student wizard. And it is a new to district student. In this case, the student's name is Frank Fletcher. Change to my group and mail. Uncheck these boxes. Hit save. I did select a gender, I thought. Okay. Now go back to view student data and assign a contact. Okay. Okay. Now we'll head back to Neil's application. I'll head back in. Uh oh. I don't think you saved. Did I not say it? Right here? Yep. Very good. I only did that to just demonstrate how important it is for our viewers to save. So, so now we'll go to the meals application. Hit next. Hit next. And the scenario is faith. Fletcher. Greg Fletcher is the only assigned student and no income was provided on this scenario. Nothing here.
nothing here. No other adult was provided. Nothing here, correct? No income was provided for faith. No social security. Nothing here. Nothing here. Nothing here. I think on the second page, you have to enter the case number. Did I miss it? I was yeah. looking for it. It's right Go towards to the beginning. Thank you. I appreciate that. Was it here? So which one is it? I did the first one. Enter the following case number. Okay. There it is. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, dash eight, nine, dash two, dash three. Oh. Maybe not that one? Maybe no dashes? Um, no dashes. The scenario has dashes, so I threw them in there. There we go. Hit next. Now I can go through this, correct? Yep. Thank you for stopping me. I appreciate it. I was hoping I'd see it soon. I never saw it. So. Here's the case number. This is the summary page. Again, we have to print after you click I certify. Hit submit. Back to our home page. Pending. Select. Accept. And view notification letter and save. All right. And then there is one more scenario, scenario seven, another case number. The only difference between that I saw between six and seven is this six had one adult, one child, and seven has one adult, two children. Um, different case number, of course, but that's, that's all the difference I saw in the two. Okay, you're almost done. I want to so read one Erica. question. There's one yeah. question, Eric. I want to. Um, so Dan put on there uh, just about that he greatly appreciated this meal application process. It'll help. However, new families or students will not have a JMC parent access until they've registered. So you'll have to remember that new families, you'll have to get them into the system before they can run through this this online meals app. So they. Their kids and themselves have to be in it first, and then they can log in and go through that. So it's a good thing to bring up. Thanks, Dan, for that. So just remember that you may have some people with um, with kids, new kids in the system. Everything has to be in there first before they can run through this. One more question just came in, Eric, if you want to address. Well, I believe that our system have, has it set that if you have too many numbers or not enough, it won't let you proceed forward. So um, I think if that one had what 10, 10 numbers, I think that's what they have to have. So I think it's set to, that it won't let you have the wrong amount. If you didn't type it in right, it'll it'll make you type in the correct number of numbers. Now we can't guarantee you that they're typing in the right numbers. Right. That we can't do, but I believe it will make you type in the right number of numbers that are there. That let Scenario seven actually has um, one number short, so it does not let you proceed. Oh, so that's the, that's what they're trying to get at there. Yep. Very good. Okay, thank you for that. Great. Okay, so I, again, I want to reiterate that um, this presentation, video presentation, is going to be put on YouTube. And I'm going to send it via email to everyone that registered for this webinar today. In the, uh, in the description of the video, you're going to find a link to the presentation used, but also the one sheet um, of all the scenarios 
and some helpful tips from JMC. Here are the last instructions, and, and maybe ladies, you can speak to this, but Deb, um, Deb wants this uh, scanned and emailed to her as one attachment. She requested one attachment per email in this um, order. Scenario one summary, scenario one notification, scenario two summary, scenario two notification, and so on. And her email address is right here. So you'll be able to send it on. Can I ask a question of the ladies again? So how did you guys handle scenario seven? Since it doesn't let you, you can't proceed on because there's only nine numbers. How did you let Deb know that? I actually took like a screenshot stating that it won't let me proceed. And then I sent her that. Okay. So that's good to know. It makes sense. So yeah. on that page where you, um, they didn't give you enough numbers and it tells you you didn't give you enough numbers, just print that page and save it as PDF for scenario seven. There won't be an associated um, notification letter because there wouldn't be one yet because you haven't been able to send it in or attach it. So that scenario seven will just have that one page where you can't type in, the, there's not enough numbers to proceed. So you will not have a notification letter for scenario seven to send Deb. Is that, is that what I'm hearing? That's correct. correct. Okay. So I'm going to change the notes that I'm sending out uh, to say, print a screenshot of this because it doesn't have enough numbers in the case number. Yes. Yes, yeah. that makes sense. Okay. All right, just making a quick note there to send out. Great. Um, so any other ladies, especially any other things that we missed or, or notes, something that you came across that might benefit people listening? I think just to note that this um, online application is just kind of an additional benefit that JMC offers for parents to be able to apply at home. So I know some people were asking questions about um, who enters the information, um, but that's the first part that you were showing us with the scenario. That's what parents will enter into their own parent portal. Right. And then um, we would go in on our office side and we would accept those um, and send those notification to parents we wouldn't actually be entering that information under the parent portal. That parent would be doing that from their home or um, like for us at our school, we do set up a laptop at registration so that they can check their demographics and then we'll encourage them to apply for free and reduced online as well. Great, that brings up a good point. This, although this seven scenario thing seems kind of tedious and maybe a little time consuming, we were on pace to get through it within an hour. And I got to think it saves the office staff hours and hours of work hand entering this information, doesn't it? Oh, definitely. Okay. Great. And another thing to remember is you can still, so let's say you get through, you know, all your parents with this and you have one person that comes in that's new to the school and maybe they don't know how to use a computer, et cetera. They can always fill out the manual form and then you can run, you know, put that information in, in JMC office. So that's still an option if it comes down to that. Great. Okay. So in summary, keeping each school district in the state of Iowa that wants to use online meals application for the 2021 school year, must test their SIS with these seven scenarios. Upon completion of this process, you should have, well, we've changed this a little, 13 documents, seven summary pages, I don't know, six summary pages, one screenshot, and six eligibility notification letters. Okay. 
All right, any other questions that people want to ask? All right, hearing none, I will go ahead and um, get this video up on YouTube, send it out with the different uh, documents that I promised, and you should have this, uh, I would say, within the hour. So, Eric Doyle, ladies, I really appreciate your time today. Thank you for helping me through this. Thank you. Dan asks one thing, uh, after testing the seven scenarios, do we send that to Deb Linderblood? Yes, you do. Um, we, we will send, you would send uh, the documents that we talked about here, the summary page and the acceptance letter or the notification letter, excuse me, for the first six scenarios, but then scenario number seven will just have a screenshot because the case number is invalid and can't be typed in the JMC. Michelle says, last school year, we had set up our consultants as a parent contact and test students. Can those be deleted now? I would think they could be if they were test students, yes. Yes, that's the, that's the way they did it last year is you set up the consultant from the state of Iowa, you set them up as a parent with one student attached, they logged into your uh, parent access and ran through these scenarios. So now you can remove those. Great. Good questions. You're welcome, Leanne. Thanks for joining us. All right, that's all I have, everybody. Thank you for joining and thank you for being JMC customers. We'll talk to you next time.